of September, 29th, 29th of September. That'll be on a Sunday night. 29th will be on a Sunday night. It'll go through Sunday night, through Wednesday night. If the Lord gets to moving and God says, Moses, go on, we can go on through Friday night. But we got it scheduled Sunday night through Wednesday night with Brother Steve Orr. And we'd like for you to make plans to come and be with us here in Durham. Revival starting the end of this month, the 30th of September, 29th of September through that Wednesday night. Let us sing unto the Lord.
Could you look at your neighbor tonight and tell him you've got a reason to live because of Jesus? Hallelujah, hallelujah. He gave me a reason. He gave me a purpose. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Beautiful song, wasn't it? Such a beautiful song. Amen. I enjoyed hearing that tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Reminding us of why we're here. Praise God. I think about been sick some last week or so and I can see and have thoughts of others that are laying on their bed sick they're not able to go anywhere they're not able to shop they're not able to go to church they just lay there and look at the four walls of a room you know that's really no way to have to live unless you got Jesus I feel sorry for people that don't know Jesus they have to lay there day in and day out and that old tormenting devil tormenting their mind they don't have no peace of God in their life oh I'll tell you tonight I don't know which way we're gonna leave here some of us may end up being confided to a bed. We don't know. But I'll tell you, whatever way I find myself, if I could have Jesus, hallelujah. The writer said, I will be content in whatever state that I am in because I have Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're grateful tonight for Jesus. If you have your Bibles, turn with us into the 11th chapter of the book of First Corinthians tonight. I spoke to you briefly some last Wednesday night. Uh, we had such a wonderful testimony service. Different ones just feeling an unction to testify. That's always in order when you feel the unction from the Lord. And uh, I just briefly mentioned after the testimony service sort of what I had on my heart to talk to us about maybe on a few Wednesday nights upcoming. And I think tonight we'll begin to start what I feel like I'd like the Lord to help me, amen, to maybe speak to you all concerning. Uh, I want to just talk to us some right out of the Word of God. 11th chapter, ver verse number 1. 1 Corinthians, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. I want to read that again. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. I'm speaking to us tonight as you're seated. Amen. I'm speaking to us on the subject of being subject unto your head. Amen. Everyone here tonight, every human being upon the face of this earth, amen, every human head, whether they are male or whether they are female, is under the headship of Jesus Christ. Amen. We must all be subject unto the instructions and the commandments of our Lord and Savior because he is head above all heads. Yeah. Praise God. Whether you're man or woman, we are subject unto Christ. Nobody is held unaccountable to their maker. He creates all things he has made you and I. And the Bible teaches us 
that he has formed us and he has created us from the dust of the ground. And uh, we come from God and, from, and, and the Bible said unto God we're going to return unto him. And every man and woman is going to give an account unto God concerning their deed, whether they be good or whether they are evil. Praise God. I want to say to us tonight, there is an order to the headship here according to the scripture. We know that the head of every man is Christ. And that's kind of what I want to speak on first of all tonight. The head of every man is Christ. And I want to tell us this tonight. It goes on and says concerning the woman, the head of the woman is the man. But I made mention first, and this is what I'll talk some tonight about, about even concerning the head of every man is Christ, whether man or woman. When you stand before the judgment seat of Almighty God, your husband is not going to answer for you, even though he may be your head here in this life. Amen. When you stand before God, you're going to answer for yourself. So that's the reason why we need to understand tonight we're all under the headship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Tonight I want to start out by saying, amen, just a few things tonight. But concerning man, we know that he has made a distinction here from the man from the woman. And I want to just maybe speak concerning the man tonight, just a little bit. And I'll first sta state here tonight that uh, men here in our church, and maybe those that may be listening by means of uh, uh, social media tonight, we have a great starting place, a great learning place when it comes to understanding Amen. Uh, being subject unto Christ. Men, when it comes to uh, the woman being subject unto us, it first gives us, amen, an, an obligation that we as men should be subject unto Christ. If we are subject unto Christ, praise God, I believe that things will fall in order as we have read here in the Word of God. But being subject unto Christ, we have a good starting place, a learning place. We can learn from our head, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want us to understand Jesus Christ and Him sent to this world. Amen. We have to understand, amen, Jesus did not come into this world to do his own will. But Jesus, amen, came to this world for the purpose of doing the will of his heavenly Father. And if I read right in the scripture here tonight, the Bible said that the head of Christ is God. Amen. Jesus never acted, amen, independently from his Father. Praise the Lord. Amen. We can read, amen, in the book of Luke. Luke tells us concerning Jesus when he was about the age of 12 years old. Joseph and Mary, the Bible said they journeyed unto Jerusalem. When they went into Jerusalem, they went there to celebrate the Passover. And on their way, Aben, leaving Aben, Jerusalem, going back to Nazareth, they discovered that Jesus was not with them. And the Bible said that they went back to the city. And when they went back, they found Jesus. And Jesus was in the synagogue. Jesus was there in the temple. And he was talking and he was reasoning among the teachers there. Amen, in the temple. Praise God. And when his parents, amen, came to see about Jesus, Jesus responded unto his parents. And many of you know what he said. Amen, Jesus said unto them, I must be about my father's business. Praise God. That was, amen, 
uh, what I would say that even story defines the life of Christ. Hallelujah. Over and over throughout the scripture. You will find even everything that Jesus did in his life was to serve his Father's will. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, in the book of John, the 17th chapter, in the 4th verse, he said, I have glorified, Jesus is speaking and praying to his Father. He said, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Amen. So that's what his whole desire was. That's what his whole mission was. When he come to this earth, amen, God gave him a work to do. And Jesus was about his father's business. He was devoted to his father's will. Amen. He said, I have finished the work which thou hast gavest me to do. Hallelujah. He came to this world uh, not of his own will nor of his own accord. But in God's word, John chapter 8 and verse number 42, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I have proceeded forth and came forth from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Hallelujah. Amen. So we find here tonight, thank God that Jesus was sent of his Father, and he stayed, amen, subject unto his Father's will. Glory to God. What am I even bringing all this out here for tonight? Jesus is our great example, men, folks. Amen. He stayed subject unto his Father. Hallelujah. And he said here in these verses of Scripture, Amen, uh, said the head of every man is Christ. So, amen, if we're going to be subject to, Hallelujah to our headship. We have the great example of Christ being subject unto his Father. Glory to God. Even a man when it costed him. Hallelujah. Great swat, uh, The Bible said his sweat became as great drops of blood. Hallelujah. He knowed he came to this world for the purpose and the reason that his Father sent him here. But the Bible teaches us that he agonized in his flesh in that garden. Amen. And he came to, had to come to the place in his flesh. Thank God that he prayed and said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Are we praying that kind of prayer tonight, men, folks, in our lives? Are we devoted to our Savior like our Savior was devoted to His Father. Praise God. His Father's will was of the utmost importance of His life. That's my mission. That's why I have come to do His will. And I'm going to tell you, He did not alter. Praise God. Even, amen, when His flesh was crying out. Even, amen, praise God, when he said, Father, let this bitter cup pass from me, nevertheless, Lord. He, I'll tell you, Christ had a servant's heart. Praise God, he said, Father, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Thank God, I'd like to, amen, be like my great example, the Lord Jesus Christ, and how he was so faithful to his Father how he was devoted to his father. Amen, brother. He was not altering from his father's will. I'd like to have that same kind of devotion to my, amen, my Savior. Amen, Christ, which is my head. Glory to God. I want to be subject unto him the same way. Oh, glory to God. It's so important. Amen, I, I just was looking at the life of Christ. Amen. And some of the things, amen, that stood out to me in all the things that Jesus done, things that he taught and the things that he preached. Amen. He did not preach.
preach his own agenda. Praise God. Amen. He only taught, amen, what the Father gave him to speak. Could we look together in the book of St. John, the 17th chapter? Amen. I want to read a few verses in the 17th chapter and the 6th verse. Hallelujah. Listen. He has preached, amen, only what his Father has commissioned and gave him to speak. 17th chapter of St. John, verses number 6. He said, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Even thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept my word. Now listen. Now they have known that all things Whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Have you read that right there? Even I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them. And I and, and known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but I pray for them that thou hast given me. For they are thine. All are, and all are mine are thine and thine are mine. And I am glorified in thee. Amen. We find here where Jesus Christ, amen, only spoke and preached that. Hallelujah, that God gave him. He delivered it unto them. In the book of John, the 12th chapter, in the 49th verse, he also says, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what Jesus done. Exactly what God had commanded him to speak. Amen. We don't know a whole lot, amen, about the personal life of Jesus, amen, outside of maybe three years span, amen, we know some, amen, but within those three years, we see the picture of a man, amen, that had a singular focus on his heavenly father. Praise God. Hallelujah. His eye was singular on what his father sent him to do. And he meant to accomplish the mission that his father has sent him to do. Can I talk to us men here tonight? Amen. Listen. Thank God God saved us for a reason. God called us out of sin. Amen. Saved us and redeemed us for a reason. And when he has saved us, my friend, hallelujah, we should have that same singular eye, that same, amen, singular, amen, thought in our heart. Praise God, we want to do the will of our Savior. Thank God, he saved me, he redeemed me, he washed me with his precious blood. Nobody else could have done that. My mama couldn't have done it. Nobody else could have done it. Jesus done it for me. Hallelujah. I am, amen, uh, owed him everything. I'm indebted to him tonight. Glory to God. And I think tonight, hallelujah, whatever he requires and wants of me, Amen. It's a small thing compared, thank God, to what he done for me that night when he saved my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God Jesus' whole mission was to do his Father's will. Amen. Folks, tonight what he done for us when he saved us. Hallelujah. Brother, he purchased us with his precious blood. And we are not no longer our own, but we belong to God Almighty. 
Hallelujah. And we need to be devoted to him in everything of our lives. And I'm telling you in this hour that you and I are living in tonight, Praise God, we're living in a moment of time. I'll be the first one on the altar tonight. Amen, brothers and sisters, we're seeing, amen, a time when there are many, hallelujah, that's willing to go so far, but they're not willing to go any further. Praise God. Amen. If God requires that of me, I'm sorry. Amen. If God wants me to do that, I'm sorry. If God wants me to lay that down, I'm sorry. I just can't do that. Amen. What if he that way about us amen when we were lost and undone without him thank God couldn't help ourselves couldn't cleanse us couldn't watch ourselves hallelujah but I'm telling you it was a great price that he paid on that old rugged cross but hallelujah our savior went all the way he didn't stop half of the way but he went all the way for you and I Oh, glory to God, don't you want to be sold out to him tonight? Don't you want to be, amen, completely his tonight? Hallelujah, he is, amen, Lord of everything in our life, or he's Lord of nothing. That's what I've always been taught. Amen, he's Lord and master of everything of our life, or he's Lord of nothing. Praise God, he's not going to take second place in our lives. Glory to God, help me preach right here just a minute. Hey, man, brother, he's going to take preeminence, uh, first place in our life. He's going to have the pinnacle, hallelujah, of our desire is God Almighty. I love to read after the writer that said, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. Praise God. I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Hallelujah. That I might behold the beauty of the Lord. Thank God tonight, my friend. Amen. Are we subject unto Christ our head? Hallelujah. As he was subject unto his father. Or do we put limits on how far that we're willing to go for Christ? I read. Of God where he said even except you are willing let me read this scripture I wrote it down glory to God I should be able to quote it hallelujah even said if any man will come after me let him first do what deny himself glory to God listen to me church Amen. You can point fingers across the aisle if you want to. Amen. You can find fault with anybody else if you want to. But the, my daddy always said the person that gives me the most trouble is the one that wears my own hat. Hallelujah. Denying your own self. That's where he started out with. Praise God. If any man, amen, come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Hallelujah. Thank God. We are just not wired up that way as a Gentile people. A Gentile people, if you read the word of God, the Bible said the Gentiles, amen, brother, they love dumb idols. The Gentiles, praise God, they followed after. Amen, brother. They, they loved the trinkets of the world. They loved the things and the idols of the world. And Jesus said, if you're going to love me and you're going to follow after me, you've got to deny yourself. Hallelujah. I still believe it's a self-denial walk with God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God, my friend. We've got to crucify ourself every day. Amen. To come alive unto God. That's what we done when we went down in the baptism in that water. It represented death. Amen. Dying out to ourself. And we have been risen up into new life. Amen. Brother to follow after the will of God. Hallelujah. How is it that after we are saved. Thank God sometimes we get to the place. Amen. Where we feel like I'll do it my way. Amen. I'll go my direction. I've got it 
patterned out the way I want it to go. No, sir, my friend. Hallelujah. As long as you've got breath in this world, you're going to have to take your instructions from your head. Amen. Which is Christ Jesus. When he says don't go there, you don't go. Amen. When he says don't put on that, you don't put it on. Amen. Brother, we have to give ear. Amen. Brother, and be subject to our head. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, he is the great example. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know we'll never be Jesus. Hallelujah. But I believe he sets forth the greatest model and the greatest example for us. Hallelujah. His loyalty, his devotion, praise God. Amen. That should be what we seek after. Bible said they were first called Christians at Antioch because why? They were what? Christ-like. I'll never be Jesus. Praise God. But I have a obligation. I have a responsibility that if I'm going to bear his name, thank God I should walk as he walked. I should talk as he talked. Amen. I should do as he done. He is our great example. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. My friend, I want to be Christ-like in all ways. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I believe amen. He set forth this example because he knew it was possible for you and I amen brother to live a life thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Just like him. Oh yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ's life was a reflection of his father. Our life should be a reflection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, as I think about, amen, a devotion unto Christ and him being my head. Hallelujah. I want to say this. Amen. There is no middle ground and there is no halfway point. There is no such thing as being a casual Christian. Amen. That one sister said one time, her neighbor, amen, vexed her. Oh, and she said, I believe it was uh, Brother, Hester's, Brother Hester's mother, amen. She said, this woman said, I'll, I'll want to lay down my religion for a few minutes and take care of this problem. And then I'll pick it back up again. Amen, I'm sorry. Amen, there is no such thing as a casual Christian. My life is not my own. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God, thank God. We're either His or we're not. Oh, glory. Amen, I want to be subject unto my head, which is Christ. He has set the bar high. Amen. Sister Mayone, but it ain't too high for us to reach. No, sir. Hallelujah. If I'm understanding right, Sister Alice, thank God Jesus set the example for us. Hallelujah. But he, he said, listen, I'm going away. Amen. He said, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Thank God. And if I read in the scripture, the Bible said we'd have infirmities. But if, if, if I understood it right, it said the spirit helpeth our infirmities. Thank God we have God the Father which is the head over Christ. And then we have Christ which is the head over man. And then we have the precious Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Almighty God. Amen. The Bible said He is the Spirit of truth. Praise God. And He will lead us and He will guide us into all truths. Hallelujah. That Spirit of God helpeth our infirmities. 
Jesus has gone back unto his father, but he has sent unto us the Holy Ghost. If you find yourself falling short, Amen. Of being subject unto Christ, your head. Amen. Ask yourself the question Are you walking in the Spirit? Are you full of the Holy Ghost? How many knows the Holy Ghost is walking hand in hand with God? The Holy Ghost is walking hand in hand with Jesus. They are, amen, all three are one. The Bible said there's one spirit. And the Bible said there's one Lord. And there is one baptism into which we have all, amen, been baptized into that one spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes, and I do, amen, I have to see, amen, am I full of the Spirit like I should? Amen, if I'm full of the Spirit, brother, amen, I can walk in accordance and be subject unto God. For the Spirit, amen, will assist me. The Spirit will help me. Thank God, hallelujah, don't tell me you're full, amen, of the Spirit of God. God, if you're not subject unto Christ, hallelujah, listen to me, glory to God, amen, I believe this with all my heart, amen, when you have a desire to be subject unto Christ, amen, and you die out to this old flesh and you become sanctified and you die out to this old flesh, you are then a candidate for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, sis, but you're not going to get the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, until God sees, amen, that you are totally willing and and submissive, amen, to the will of Almighty God. And when you're dead and you're sanctified and you're submissive and God sees that's your heart's desire, he will fill you with the Holy Ghost of God, amen, and that Holy Ghost of God, amen, brother, will help you, amen, be subject unto Christ. Glory to God, hallelujah. Amen, listen to me. I believe, hallelujah, when you get full of the Holy Ghost, you will have no desire, amen, to sin. Glory to God. Tell me what you please. You're not committing adultery full of the Holy Ghost. I'll never believe it. Amen, brother, you're not slipping around saying things that you ought not to say. Amen, full of the Holy Ghost. I'll never believe it. The Holy ghost. Amen, brother. He's a watchman over our mouth. He's a watchman over our heart. Amen. When we step in the wrong direction, he'll woo us. He'll deal with us. The Spirit of God will pull us back to where we need to be. Oh, hallelujah. You can override that. Amen. You can go your way. Hallelujah. Amen. You can fall into something that you have no business falling into. But you, amen, Somehow another, amen, brother, lost the fullness of the Holy Ghost in your life. Brother Smith, can you back up what you're saying? I sure can. Amen, because I remember reading, amen, where the Bible said Peter, amen, before the Pentecostal blessing came, hallelujah, Peter, amen, he said, you're going to deny, amen, said, you're going to deny me three times before the cock shall crow. Peter said, Lord, I'll never deny you, but you know the story, amen, just as much as God said he was going to deny him, he did, hallelujah, but sister, Peter was there amen when the Holy Ghost fell Peter got full of the Holy Ghost I feel God right here amen when Peter got full of the Holy Ghost I never read anywhere in that black book where he ever denied Jesus hallelujah hallelujah that Holy Ghost glory to God amen is always subject I'm telling you if you don't have the Holy Ghost 
you need him. He is sensitive. Amen, brother. He is very particular. Glory to God. He sees things you cannot see. Amen. He discerns and knows things that you don't know. Amen. He can look up down the road down yonder. Amen. And he can see something and he'll turn you from going that direction because he knows you don't need to go. The Holy Ghost is needful. Jesus said, I'm a going away. How often was the disciples prone? Help me here. How often were they prone? Listen, hey, amen, brother. Jesus saved them from their fishing nets. But as soon as Jesus turned his back, hey, amen, and went down the road somewhere else, some of them said, I go back to fishing. Hey, amen, I go get my nets again. Hallelujah. How prone were they? Amen, brother, to forget and go right back where they come from. Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost, which is a comforter. Amen, brother, you're going to need him. He's going to abide with you forever. He shall be with you. But he said he shall be. He'll take up his abode on the inside. Glory to God. When the devil tries to get me to go back to the net. Amen, brother. I've got a Holy Ghost uh, that's holding the reins. Uh, I've got a Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. That says, oh no. Uh, hallelujah. I'm with you. Amen. I'm staying here with you. You don't step backwards. You keep going forward. That Holy Ghost keeps t- leading us. Amen. Forward with God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory. Amen. That Holy Ghost is subject. Amen. He keeps us subject unto Christ. Amen. I ain't covered the least of this that I'd like to cover tonight. But the head of man is Christ. Lord of God. We have to be subject to Christ. He has got to be the one that we are willing to listen to whatever he bids us to do. Glory to God. And it goes on now, the next part says, and the head of the woman is the man. Listen to me, man. You're the head of the woman. But how can you be head of the woman? If you're not letting Christ be head of you. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, I can tell her what to do. She has to do what I tell her to do. Amen. You ain't prayed for a solid week. She's going to do what I tell her to do. And you ain't read your Bible. And you ain't been praying and seeking God. I'm telling you this thing goes in order. Hallelujah. Now there's some, I am getting on my subject next week, but I'm going to hit it just a minute, then we'll get on it next week a little bit further. There's times I've had to go back to my wife and say, I'm sorry. Maybe some of you men might not admit it, but I wasn't subject from, to the Lord like I should have been, and I tried to make demands of her. Amen. I had to, God had to let me see myself. I had to go back. And apologize. It takes a man to do that. But I want to tell you what. Amen. How many times are we going back to Jesus and saying, Lord, you've done something for me nobody else could do. And sometimes I get a little bit stubborn and I want to do it my way. Sometimes, Lord, I get a little hard-headed. Amen. And I forget about I come down to this altar full of sin and undone without God. And I forget about what you've done for me. Hallelujah. I'm coming to a close right here. Last couple of weeks I've been sick. Oh, yeah. Amen. And uh, the Lord's touched me and I feel much, much better. I won't tell you what it's made me do. Amen. It's made me appreciate a God that comes and sees about me. Hallelujah. Oh, well, I'll just, I'll use him, amen, when I need him. But when everything's going good, I'll just sort of put him on the shelf up here. 
Oh, amen. But I want to tell you, when you're down and you're sick and you need help and you call on him and he comes to your rescue when you know you ain't been worthy of it. That ought to make you want to, amen, be more devoted to him and love him, amen, even more, hallelujah. Oh, what a great God we're serving as we're standing all over the church tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, one thing about our Savior, thank God, listen to me, amen, he'll never, never be unreasonable. That's one thing about him. He'll never be unfair. He'll never be unequal. Thank God. He said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burdens is light. Hallelujah. You know what he wants us to do, brother? Amen. He wants us to serve him with gladness. He wants us to serve him with joy. Hallelujah. It ought not to be just a, amen, a thing where, hallelujah, we're serving him just because of his position, amen, and he's Lord. No, we're serving him because we love him, amen. Whatever he bids me to do, Lord, I want to do it, amen, because you've done so much for me. Hallelujah. Tonight, the altars is open for every saint of God that'll come in. Let's come, amen, find us a place, Hallelujah. Let's pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed.